Welcome Bio321 students. You're in the proposal writing phase right now and you're wondering how do I write up about the statistics and the experimental design of my um, study that I'm going to perform with this uh, and describe in this proposal. So I need some language, I need some understanding of how to go about describing it in my project plan, my research plan <coughs> section of the proposal. So that's why you're watching this video if you're not watching it for uh, that reason, then you might want to wait on this one. Um, there are going to be two more statistics videos, by the way, that are going to explain analysis of variance in more detail and actually how to do those analyses in the statistics program that we use in this course called SAS Jump. Okay, but before we get to that, <clears throat> we just basically need to be able to describe our experimental design to a reviewer of our proposal. So remember, we keep the audience in mind when we are developing our proposal. And our audience is a uh, well-educated scientist who may not be understanding exactly our factors, uh, and yet they can judge whether an experimental designer is good or not if we describe it well enough. So we need to describe it well enough. So how do we meet that expectation? <clears throat> okay. What we need to do is uh, use a case study. So I'm going to actually use a case study here. I've devised an experiment. <clears throat> Where? What do, what do I have? I have two UV levels. I have three CO2 levels. And in a two-way factorial design, I've got all possible combinations of those, right? So I have six different treatments here, but they are combinations of two levels of UV and three levels of CO2 in all possible combinations. And I've just filled in my cells of this design. Each one of these things is a cell. <clears throat> I've filled it in with an N of 15, imagining, for example, that I might be growing 15 different trees under 400 parts per million and 15 trees under uh, those same 15 under ambient UV levels. And then I would have a total, you can see, in the two by three factorial design, I have two levels of UV three levels of CO2, so I would describe this as a 2 by 3 factorial experiment. I have an N of 15, that's my replication, <clears throat> and so I'm going to have a total of, what, 90 plants in this experiment. So I will measure a bunch of dependent variables on those 90 plants. So I need to be able to describe this to my reader. So what I'm going to do is just kind of create a text box here and show you how I would go about actually describing that. Uh, to my reader. Okay, so um, we first of all need to kind of set up our description. So what we're saying is we want um, to understand this two-way interaction. That's right. That's why we're setting up this experiment that way. So, so what we want to do is describe that to test whether trees will, uh, let's see, will have a different response to elevated UVB under um, alternative CO2 levels. Let's pull this back in the screen here. Okay, so this is this is describing our interaction. So did it test whether trees will have a different response to elevated UVB in other words, going from ambient to elevated will be different under different CO2 levels to test whether that response to UV changes as a function of CO2 level. Um, uh, we designed a two-way factorial experiment. You know, it could be better to say a two by three factorial experiment um, <clears throat> and then I would have an actual table or a figure if you prefer that shows what I'm showing here. A figure is worth a thousand words. This says that we have all combinations of the two levels of UV and the three levels of CO2 and it gives our replication. Um, but we want to describe that in words. <clears throat> and so We've described it here as a two by three factorial experiment. And we might even add with n equals 15 per cell in the design. 
All right, great. So that describes our experiment uh, in broad brush, and we are citing a table. This is how you cite a table. And we would have a little table legend up here um, above this, which is a two-way factorial design uh, <clears throat> evaluating the effect of UV and CO2 levels on uh, growth and physiology of balsam fir. Let's see, if we're working with balsam fir. Okay, um, but now we need to go on and explain how we're actually going to do this. And so we might have uh, another sentence which follows this which is going to say um, something about how we're going to implement these treatments. So what we'll say is um, one growth chamber will be set at ambient CO2. I would subscript the CO, the two on CO2, obviously. One growth chamber will be set at ambient CO2 uh, level, at the ambient CO2 level. <clears throat> of 400 parts per million. Um, a second growth chamber would be, and here again I want to sort of um, describe why I'm doing these levels. So you give a rationale for your levels. A second chamber would be set at 600 parts per million. The CO2 concentration predicted for 2000, the year 2060 AD, according to the International PC, I, the International Panel on Climate Change, um, and you could cite a specific one like 2008, uh, mid-level projection. Okay, so <clears throat> you want to give a rationale for each of the levels you're choosing. A third growth chamber will be set at 800 parts per million um, corresponding to the IPCC 2008 high level projection for the year 2016. And I just made those numbers up, okay, so don't quote me on those numbers. In fact, just a little side note here, you don't want to be using doing this experiment. Number one, we can't control, we're not going to have three growth chambers at three different CO2 levels, and moreover, we can't do UVB radiation manipulations in our particular growth chambers here at WVU. So I'm specifically and purposely doing an experiment that you cannot design here. So don't copy me exactly. I'm just showing you what you need to do in describing your experiment. You need to explain the rationale for choosing those levels. Okay, we aren't done yet. Um, uh, what we need to do now is explain the UVB levels. Um, UV B levels will be uh, created using a UVB lamp bank, um, and it might have been described in Peter John uh, 1998, um, a reference that describes those lamp banks, and um, the ambient UV B level is created. Let's see here. We want to. Uh, let's see. Oh, I didn't put that in a nice box, did I? Ambient UVB level um, is created um, by modulating the lamp banks to a level commensurate with those expected in Morgantown WV under the current ozone, climatic ozone conditions. And then you would want a citation for that, right? Peter John, uh, 1998. So you want to justify your level. In fact, in the last paragraph when I was justifying CO2, we cited IPCC, right? Here we're just we're um, citing uh, Peter John, who published this. 
the elevated level will be produced by elevating plants so they are closer to the uh, lamp bank and simulating 20% um, uh, ozone depletion. And again, you would want a citation for that level. Okay, so we've justified our two levels. Um, we now want to also want to say um, uh, in each cell of the design, I know it's there in the table, uh, and there will be 15 replicate trees. Okay, so we've fleshed out our experimental design. We've explained um, the levels of that design. So I would explicitly have a section of your proposal, which is called experimental design under your research plan, which would have a figure, which would have verbiage like this that describes your different levels and your rationale for them. Okay? Just like I would have a section that describes your experimental organism, or your experimental system in your research plan. And the next thing we want to have is we want to have an explanation of our statistical analysis. And again, you can have a subheading under your research plan called statistical analysis. And what you want to say here, and all of our experiments, at least in the ecology sections of Bio321, have a common kind of format where we are doing a two-way factorial design. And so we want to say um, the two-way factorial design will be analyzed using a two-way analysis, analysis of variance using SAS jump version 11, let's say, 0.0. If, in fact, that's what's in the computer lab and that's what you're going to use. Okay? Now, that's not quite enough. Okay, that does say, and by the way, we should have a citation for SAS. SAS Institute, Institute uh, 2013, and you want to put, or 2014, and you want to put a reference in your reference list for that. Um, okay, so we've explained that we're going to do a two-way analysis of variance, um, and uh, we might have something in here about um, for our continuous dependent variables, uh, including, and so we'll have a list of the variables we're going to measure here, so biomass, height, uh, and the leaf number at day 45 of our experiment um, and uh, chlorophyll content um, of leaves uh, along with root to shoot ratio. Again, we probably have another section of our research plan where we've described the dependent variables that we're going to measure and how we're going to measure them, what day, and so forth. So I'm not explaining all that again here. I'm just explaining what analysis we're going to do on that. Okay, so then we want to explain, though, that we understand how we're going to interpret this analysis. So we would say something like uh, a significant uh, UVB cross CO2 interaction would indicate that the effect of UVB on our dependent variables uh, was a function of CO2 levels. Okay. Or, or let's see, maybe there's a better way to put that. Was not the same at all CO2 levels. Okay, 
In other words, there was a significant interaction. So, but we want to be able to say that in our output, we recognize that it's the UVB cross CO2 interaction, which will indicate that the effect of UVB depended on the level of CO2 for our dependent variables. Okay, so that's kind of the level at which we expect you to be able to express the statistical analysis at this phase of our game. Um, when we get down to it, um, what you're going to see is that we set up a statistical model, actually, which is going to be uh, consisting of main effects of UVB radiation and then um, main effects of CO2. And then what we're going to put in our model is the UVB cross CO2 interaction term. Okay. And so what we're essentially doing is we're saying our dependent variables are a function of UVB, function of CO2, and a, and, a, and a function of the dependency of the UV effect on CO2 level. We can state it the other way around if we prefer. Okay, so at this point, um, what we're doing is focusing on this UVB cross CO2 interaction because remember why we're doing the two-way factorial design. It has to do with looking at that complexity. How, for example, will the biomass effect on, of UVB radiation depend on the level of CO2. And that's where we get that interactive effect that your TA has been training you about and your whole question should be developed around. All right, we'll leave it there for now. And um, we're going to develop the actual methods for doing the statistical analysis next time. Talk to you then.